Have you ever wondered which which church is the true church? Which church is the true church? As in, basically, what denomination of Christianity? Because if you're not uh, <laughs> if you're not Christian, uh, you're Satanist, then you're not <laughs> in the church. You're just uh, you're just a devil worshiper. Or maybe if you're something else, you're not church. We don't call Islam church. Is uh, I think is a religion or something else. Or you don't call. We only talk about which denomination of Christianity is the true church, and uh, which one. Uh, which is the one that God loves and cherishes and died for? Which which of the church? Which which church? Hmm? Which church did Jesus die for? Which church is his bride? Now the answer is is that no visible church or denomination is a true church because the bride of Christ is not an institution. Is not an institution, but is instead it is a spiritual entity made up of those who have, by grace through faith, been brought into a close, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. As the Bible tells us in Ephesians 2 8, for by grace are you saved through faith. So when you're saved, you become a member of the church, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, so now when you hear church, it is basically uh, that entity, spiritual entity made up of those who have by grace through faith been brought to an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Those people, no matter which building, denomination of country they happen to be in, they constitute the true church. And uh, in the Bible, in the Bible, we see that... Uh, the local or visible church is nothing more than a gathering of professing believers. You know, many people think the church is the building, that uh, we are going to the building of God, the church of God. No, the church is these people inside the building. This is what we call the church. In Paul's letters, the word church is used in two different ways. There are many examples of the word church church being used to simply refer to a group, a group of professing believers who meet together on a regular basis. Let me show you this. In uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 16 verse, uh, verse 9, it talks about just a group, okay? It says, for a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. Uh, am I reading the Yes, and there are many adversaries, okay? For if Timotheus come and the, see that he may be with you without fear, for he worked, he worked the Lord, the work of the Lord, so as I do, okay? So, he's talking about these people who are working for God, being members of the church. Let, therefore, no man despise him, but conduct him forth, uh, in peace that he may come unto me for I look unto him with uh, I look for him with the brethren. You see many people say don't despise this church but the church is who? Is the people inside the building. Don't despise the people of God. Don't, don't uh, be, uh, go against the church. The church of God is protected. No, the Bible is not talking about the building. It's talking about the people inside. And also 2 Corinthians Second Corinthians, uh, let me show you 8 verse 1. It says this. It says, Moreover, brethren, we, we, do, we do you to wit the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. The churches, the people of Macedonia. So it's not talking about the buildings of Macedonia. It's talking about the people who are believers in Jesus Christ. Are you seeing the point here? And also, 2 Corinthians 11, 28. Uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 11, uh, 28. It speaks about the same. It says, Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Hmm. Who is weak? Am I not weak? Who is offended? And I burn not. I must 
if I must need glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities. So Paul here is talking about the church. Okay, he cares so much of the church, and that's why sometimes he's is uh, 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 offended and he feels bad, but he doesn't really care about himself. He cares about the church. Now, does he care about the building? He cares about the people inside the church. That's what exactly he's saying. So, Paul's concern in his letters for the individual churches in various cities uh, along his missionary journey is all about the people. The care is for the people, not the building. Okay? Not the building. So the people are basically a spiritual entity that has close fellowship with Christ. As close as a bride to her husband. Because the church of Christ is that bride. Ephesians uh, 5. Uh, Ephesians 5, uh, 25, okay? Let's see this one here. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ has also loved the church. You see? Christ, do you think Christ was loving a building? No, he was loving the people and gave himself for it. Are you seeing the point here? So Christ is loving the people, not the building. And let's see verse 32. It says, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. So the husband loving the wife is basically Christ loving the church, loving the people. So the church is the people, not the building. Okay? And the Christ, he says that he's the spiritual head. He's the spiritual head of that family. The family of Christ. Okay? The church. He's the head. And he's the head of the body. The church. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. So Jesus is the head, just as the husband is the head of the wife. Christ is the head of the church, the head of the people. Okay? Are you seeing the point here? And also Ephesians. It's good to see these uh, verses, eh? so don't be tired. It's good to show you these verses because they mean a lot to see the verses by yourself. And to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without an end. Glory uh, in the church, in the church, okay? Are you seeing the church? So it's really, really important to understand that the church is the people, not the building. The church is the people, not the building, okay? So... Before I even come to the next point, we have to understand that the church is made up of an unnamed an, an and specified group of individuals. It's just God has not specified any individuals and said, oh, he's a Baptist, is this, is that, is that. No, he's not said anything. He's left it unnamed. Philippians uh, 3, verse 6. Philippians 3, 6. It says, Cons Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is the law, blameless. So, persecuting the church. Has he said uh, Baptist or Pentecostal or who? No. He's not said all that. Okay. He's only left it unnamed. He has not named the church. He just said, is anyone who believes in him? That's the church. So, when people are fighting and saying, oh, come to our denomination. Uh, no. See. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? So has he named any church? Has he said, uh, how will he take care of the Lutheran church? How will he take care of the uh, uh, Baptist church or the salvation? No, he's not talking about that. He's talked about the church, the people, the people, okay? So that's really important for us to understand about, uh, concerning that. Now, the word church, uh, is a translation of the Greek word ecclesia, which means called out ones or the called out assembly. The word describes a group of people who have been called out uh, out of the world and set apart for the Lord and is always used in singular form, form describing a university, uh, universal group of people who know Christ. Remember, uh, Jesus said, be ye holy for I am holy. Holy means to be separate. 
So be separated as I am separated. Okay. So the church has been called out from the crowd. It's a called out team. It's a called out team. And the word ecclesia, when plural, uh, plur, pluralized eh, or made uh, in plural, it is used to describe groups of believers who meet together. People who just meet together in plural. Okay. Interesting, uh, uh, more interesting uh, or interestingly enough, uh, the, the, the word church is never used in the Bible to describe a building. Okay. It's never describing a building or organization. No. It's not describing all that. It's, you, you know, we have two explanations that we we can talk when we, we, we mention the word church. God looks at the church as the in this the church that we don't see, the invisible church, which is the body of Christ, is what God is looking uh, at. This is exactly what God looks at. But for us, when we see church, we see the people and others, they see the building. It all depends with the, where, what exactly are you seeing? Because there are those who think the church is the building and there are those who see the church is the people. But according to God, he sees uh, the whole team, you, me, any other person, as long as he's separated and is, is a believer, is a member of church. Okay, So for us, we may separate and say, oh, that's, that's a local body of Christ. That's another local body of Christ, you know. And that's what we call the local church. So a local church is just uh, uh, somewhere, some people around who are saved, but they're in a certain area together. So that's what we call a church. So when we hear the word church, we should be thinking about a local body of Christ. Are you seeing? But it's not a building. It is easy to get uh, ensnared by the idea that uh, a particular denomination, now let's come to denominations, a particular denomination within Christianity is the true church. There's always a lot of argument. Oh, which one is the true church? But this view is a misunderstanding of scripture. When choosing a, a church to attend, it is important to remember that a gathering of believers should be a place where those who belong to the true church, the spiritual entity, like I told you, feel at home. This is to say that a good local church will uphold the word of God. The word of God. Honoring it and preaching it faithfully, proclaiming the gospel steadfastly, and feeding the uh, and and tending to the sheep. That's that's what a, a church should be. But if you say, "Oh, I'm Methodist, I'm a, a Baptist, I'm United, I don't know what, I'm Pentecostal, I'm the from which chapel, or from this and this community, Presbyterian, blah blah blah," then we'll be separating ourselves. And the church is. It's, it's, it's not all those separations. The church is basically understanding, am I in the body of Christ? Have I believed the gospel? Are you seeing the point? So a church that teaches heresy or engages in sin will eventually be very low. Okay? Very low on, the, uh, on those people that belong to the true church. People will not go there. And the sheep who hear the voice of the shepherd will follow him. They will not follow those kind of churches. Because the Bible tells us, my sheep know me. <laughs> you see why some churches people don't really go, especially those who are true believers. But of course, understand nowadays, there are fake churches and people want what their itching ears want to hear. But remember, the sheep of God, they know where the true gospel is. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Are you seeing? So it's very easy to understand and to say, oh, that's, that's a true church. Yeah, 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 true, true. Yeah, that's a true body of Christ. But there are other fake bodies, fake body of Christ there. Who will are all after prosperity and lying and uh, saying whatever uh, people want to hear and things like that. And, and the true sheep of Christ, they will know. You can just enter into a church and you tell, mm, no, 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 here there's no God, let me just leave. Because wherever there is no, wherever Jesus is not there, God will always bring in a way to tell you. Where there is no Jesus, God will, there is always a way that God will tell you, no, here there is no Christ. He will give you a spirit of discernment to discern, or he will even 
bring in someone to tell you, hey, my friend, <laughs> that church, just stay away from it. Remember, even when Jesus died, what happened? And uh, Mary Magdalena and all those others, they, they were running there to go and see if Jesus is in the tomb. God provided someone who is the angels to tell them, hey, Jesus is not here. So God will always find a way to tell you, get out from here. Sometimes people who are telling you, get out from some denominations, they are not always uh, rumor mongers and conspiracists and uh, issues. No, they are basically people, probably some of them, uh, people have been sent to go to tell you, Jesus is not here, my friend. Run. Jesus is not here. Some place where you're running after. Go away. Because the sheep of Christ, they hear his voice. And we have to understand something that... Uh, we have to understand that uh, members of the true church, of the true church of God, always enjoy agreement in fellowship around Jesus Christ. We all agree in the worship of Jesus Christ. Those are the true members. But if some are telling you, let's worship idols, like the Catholics do, they tell you, let's worship idols, and the Bible says, do not make an image above or below or anywhere, and you say, oh, it's just, a, it's just an item of worship. No. Or others, they tell you, do this to be saved, be baptized to be saved, give to the poor to be saved, give some tithes to be saved. You see, if we don't agree then uh, pluck yourself from there. The Bible says be separate. Don't fear being separated. Be ye holy. Okay? So it's very important to stay with the church, which is agrees. You all agree in the doctrine of Christ. Okay? That's really, really important. And you will have to be in a church where Jesus is plainly revealed in his word. Okay? It's all about raising Jesus, not raising ourselves. And this is what is referred as Christian unity. People coming together and being united together. That's, that's what we call Christian unity. Another common mistake is to believe that Christian unity is just a matter of agreeing with one another. No, that's, 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 we just can't agree on everything. Simple agreement for the sake of agreement does not speak the truth in love or spur one another onto uh, unity in Christ. Rather, it encourages believers to refrain from speaking difficult truths. And it sacrifices true understanding of God in favor of a false unity based on this, uh, this, this, this guineous love that is nothing more than just selfish tolerance of sin in oneself and others. Okay? So you have to understand those facts and know where am I? Where am I? Remember, the church is the bride of Christ. The true church, not just any church. The true church is the bride of Christ. The Bible tells us this in the book of Revelation. Revelation uh, 21, verse uh, 2. It tells us that we are the bride of Christ. Okay? And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for a husband. We are the new Jerusalem. We will come from heaven into this earth and rule with Christ for a thousand years. And after that, we'll get a new earth and a new heaven. So, the true Christ is the bride. Okay? The bride of Christ. And also verse 9 uh, tells us uh, here, it tells us, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come up hither, and I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. You see? You see? I will show you the bride. So, when, when this will be happening, the bride will be in heaven. The bride of Christ. My friends, look at this. Look at this. So beautiful. Are you going to be there? Are you going to be there? Because the Bible tells us that we are the bride of Christ. Uh, also, let me show you something else here interesting. Uh, Revelation 22, uh, verse 17. Verse 17. It also tells us this. Huh? It tells us, uh, And the spirits and the bride say, Come! And let him that hear it say, Come! And let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely who will be taking that water of life 
The bride will be enjoying. The bride. The bride, my friends. Okay? Okay? The bride will be there enjoying. And also, remember something else. The bride will be ruling with Christ. And that's the most important thing. We'll have all the favors. You remember the body uh, which Jesus left with? That kind of body? It could eat, it could uh, enter into buildings without uh, opening doors, it could, uh, 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 it was miraculous, so nice. It was not a spirit, but it was a literal body. That's the kind of body we love, just like the body of Christ, because we'll be mixed with Christ, we'll be the body of Christ. Are you seeing the point here? So, the Bible is very clear telling us that we are the body of Christ. Anyone who is saved is a member of the church. As the Bible tells us in Corinthians 12, 27, now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. You are part of the body of Christ. Okay? So it cannot be contaminated, this body. It can be walked in or defined by anything else rather than his love for Christ and dedication to him. You, do, you can't hate your body. You can't hate your members. It, it can't work. The true church Okay, as uh, many, many have put it, is many people out there have put, have, have put this point, is basically that the, the true church is all about spread, uh, 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 being, spreading out all the time to others and reaching to others and talking to others while we are rooted in eternity and the love of Christ together. That's the, the true church. Someone who loves his brother, someone who does good someone who forgives someone who has love someone who has care that's that's those are some of the signs of the true church okay you have to understand that so are you a, a, among the church of christ are you a, among the body of christ how you you may ask me keith how can i be a member of this church how can i be a member of this church because i'm confused with the denominations <laughs> like right now i see there are so many people who say oh Catholic is the true church, blah, blah, blah. I see Catholics so many times. They're, they're trying to say, oh, we are the true church. My friends, there's nothing like a, a building being a true church. No. Anyone who believes in God. So if these fellas, they don't believe in God, then they are not the church of Christ. If Protestants, they don't, they are not body of Christ. Evangelicals, if they don't, whoever, Pentecostal, it doesn't matter even if your name is as close as the word of Jesus, as, as the name of Jesus sounds, as long as you don't believe in Jesus, you don't believe the gospel, my friends, you're not a member of the church. You can only be a member of the church if you believe in Jesus Christ and you're saved. That's the only way you can say, oh yeah, surely I'm a member of the church. So the church is not these buildings, Catholic, Protestant, the Orthodox, whatever, Methodist, Baptist, Pentecost, all, all those, yeah, they're good, they are good names, but the body of Christ is what the church is. Are you a member of that body? If you want to know how you can be, it's through the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it's all about understanding how that Christ died for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. How did Jesus die? He died by sh shedding his blood. Because without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. The book of Hebrews tells us the blood is really important. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus 17, 11. So there had to be someone shedding his blood so that we can get forgiveness. But 2,000 years ago, while you are still seen as Christ died for us, so that whosoever believes in him will not perish but will have everlasting life. You have to understand there are five points, five key points for you to understand so that you can be able to be saved. Point number one is you have to understand that you're lost. You have to understand that you're lost. If you don't know if you're lost, then how will you look for the gospel? You can't because you think that you're still saved. No, you have to understand, hey man, I'm lost. I, I'm in need of a savior. Number two, you have to hear the gospel. How will you hear without a preacher? How will you hear without uh, getting someone to tell you about the, the good news, okay? And number three, you have to, uh, after you have heard the gospel, you have to uh, 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 understand the gospel. 
understanding is a key point because if you don't understand the gospel how christ died for your sins what really happened that he replaced himself with you you know you're supposed to be on that cross but jesus replaced himself you can be saved that's why a sinner's prayer does not save believing from the heart has to come so number four it's believing you have to believe from your heart because you don't believe from your mind but from your heart okay and then number five is you confess what you have believed you only confess what you know you don't confess what you don't know just tell jesus jesus i now confess that you died for my sins and you're buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures i believe you and i receive this atonement the payment of sin by faith by faith Thank you for saving me and thank you for being my Lord and my Savior. And my friends, if you've done that, you're saved, sealed, and sanctified unto the day of redemption. And you can never lose your salvation. Okay? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And also you can share the video for others to be able to uh, hear the gospel. And also uh, subscribe to watch more videos which we post every day. And hit the notification button so that you don't miss any new video which we post. And likewise, at the description below, we have a couple of other channels outside the YouTube that we also post. Just go and check them out and also share to your friends. God bless you and have a good time.